This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness. And today we are talking about Icarus. Let's get to it. So for those of you who do not know, let's talk about what Icarus is first. And then we'll get into all of the stuff that people really aren't talking about when it comes to this game. So what is Icarus? Icarus is a session based survival game. Well, what does that mean? Okay, so here's the game loop. You have your character and your character is always persistent. Now your character will launch down to the planet and will be there for a given amount of time. At which point they have to rush back to the rocket that they came down in and launch back up to space. If you don't do that, your character dies. And I mean dies dies, like permadeath dies. Now, you can die while you're down on the planet and you can be revived by a teammate or you can go full death and relaunch at a new launch spot. And if that happens, you just end up with some experience debt and you drop all of your items. But as of a recent patch, you are able to go back to where your body was and recover those items. If you're fast enough, those items will decay over time. So anyway, core game loop, launch down, Harvest stuff, level up, look for exotics, which is the thing that you're down there for in the first place to take back up to the station to upgrade your character in different ways. Do those things in the given time period, make it back to your rocket and launch back up to the space station. Upgrade your character with the exotics that you found, rinse and repeat. That is the core game loop. Now I know what you're wondering. Well, how long are the session times going to be? They're going to vary different times. I've heard everything from four hours to two hours to 30 minutes. It looks like they don't really have a solid idea on how long these times are going to be. Honestly, I think what is going to happen, and we'll talk about a little bit more about how they're really listening to the community here in a minute, but what I think is going to happen is they're going to launch the game with what they assume are good times, then the community is going to give them feedback and then those times are going to change. I can almost guarantee you that's what's going to happen because that's something that's really, really, really difficult to dial in if just because of the nature of how it is and how people are. It's just going to be really hard for them to dial in those numbers without large scale feedback. All right, now that you know what the game is, let's talk about if you're going to actually be able to run it on your system or not. Everything that I'm going to talk about in this section here is based on my system and what I have to go on based on how it ran on my system. I did some research and I've seen varying degrees of performance, but one thing they did not talk about in those different performance aspects is how hot their GPU actually got. I monitor these sort of things, so I'm going to share that with you. So the minimum system requirements for this thing is an NVIDIA GTX 1060 six gigabytes or equivalent. I say equivalent because I have no idea what that would be with AMD cards. You also need at least an Intel i5, 8400 and 16 gigabytes of RAM with DirectX version 11, broadband internet connection, 70 gigs of space available and Windows 10. Now, my system blows all of those settings out of the water, even the recommended settings out of the water in every aspect except for the graphics card. I'm lagging behind on my graphics card. I'm one step up from the graphics card minimum. I am running a GTX 1070. It is, however, overclocked to 1771 megahertz and it has eight gigabytes of RAM. Also, it's important to note that I have all games locked at 30 FPS because that's what I record at. So I just play everything at 30 FPS. When I first logged into Icarus, everything was set to high and I logged into the game and it immediately maxed out all the cores on my GPU and the temperature started rising. And when it got to 71C, I immediately exited out of the game, went back and changed the settings and set everything to medium. Once again, when I logged into the game, maxed out my cores and the GPU proceeded to heat up to extreme temperatures. Now I did suffer a little bit of frame rate drops here and there, but for the most part, I was getting a steady 30 FPS. I would imagine 60 FPS would, it would probably not reach it. I would imagine, I didn't even try, but I would imagine that if it was maxed out 
cores at uh, 30 FPS on everything set to medium, that if I tried to run 60 FPS, I would probably be getting somewhere around the 40s, maybe 35, something like that. Once again, did not test that. I did not let my graphics card run that long. I baby the thing. I'm not going to let it stay that hot. You may be fine with that. You may be fine running your graphics card at max. I mean, they are tested like that and they are built to run hot and be maxed out for long periods of time, but I don't do that to mine. I'm just sharing with you how this went. So once I mess with the settings a little bit more, what you're seeing here on the screen now, and after a patch, I guess they optimized some more stuff, but the game started to run really smooth. I didn't have any issues with it. Um, the temperature was hovering around 60 C, which I'm fine with that. And the GPU cores, they, they bounce around. It runs about half every now and then. It'll bounce up, max out, and then go back to half. Fans run at a continuous speed, and it's not too bad but the game looks bad. So if you're okay with the game looking bad and you're on a 1070 and you don't want to max out your cores and run the thing super hot, you should be fine with a solid experience. I would not recommend giving it a go on a 1060. I would say it's going to be iffy if you do. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend doing this, running this game or buying this game if you don't have an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 20 or 30 series. Either one of those, any of those in those series, you should be absolutely fine to run this game and have it look gorgeous. Now, another option that you can do is this game is on GeForce Now, and I gave GeForce Now a test run, and it looks gorgeous. It runs beautiful and looks gorgeous. The downside to that is that if you want it to look that good, you're going to eat through a lot of data. So in those areas where you have data caps, this may not be a solid option for you. But if you don't have data caps and you have a high speed internet, then GeForce Now could be a solid option for you to enjoy this game looking absolutely gorgeous. With well, the footage that you're seeing now is in the majority of the footage that you're seeing in this video is on GeForce Now, and you can see it looks fantastic, runs smooth, and is beautiful. And as far as I know, GeForce Now is running all of the games on uh, RTX 30 series cards. So needless to say, the game is extremely system intensive and they want to push the boundaries of that so that that's why. They know that it is and they're okay with it being that way because that's their plan is to push the boundaries of what GPUs can do. All right, now that we got all that out of the way and you have an idea whether or not you can run this thing, let's talk about a massive elephant in the room that nobody is talking about and that is building. So when it comes to building, their building system is, it's there. It's a, it's a building system. It's not fantastic. It's not the worst I've seen. It is locked to a grid system, so it feels very rigid and clunky. Now, you can realign your pieces to the grid system and do some unique things, but for the most part, like it's very it's a very rigid build system. And it also takes some cues from Valheim when it comes to the way it handles structure support. This game actually takes a lot of cues from Valheim. Uh, we'll talk about that later, about how they... There's a lot of quality of life stuff in this game that you see from many other games. Anyway, back to building. So building very rigid, uh, not the best building system I've seen, not the worst building system I've seen, but there's something that you need to know. And that is anything you build when you are on an expedition. So when you launch down to a planet and you're in that session based situation, anything you build is not going to be there when you go back down for another expedition later. Everything gets wiped every time you leave the map. On top of that, there are constant storms that show up that will just straight up wreck your build. To be honest, I don't know why they put this type of build system in a game like this that doesn't really lend itself to this type of system. This game's core game loop lends itself much more to quick prefab structures that you would just toss down, use for a little bit, and not worry about them being destroyed. You're honestly just way better off finding shelter in a cave or anywhere literally that you can find shelter or building just a small little lean-to to get out of the storms and to put down stuff like your campfire or some quick storage or something like that because anything that you place down that is not in shelter, so for example, your storage boxes, your sleeping bag, your camp, 
campfires, your oxygen generator, all of that stuff will take durability damage over time and durability damage during a storm if it's not in some type of shelter. So you need shelter at random points in time, but you don't really need to build some type of massive structure because even if you do take the time to do that, once a storm shows up, that's more you're gonna have to fight to repair while the storm is happening. And it's honestly just better to make the smallest structure possible. Anyway, I know a lot of people out there are gonna be like, but I wanna build because you're builders. The building community in survival games is massive, probably even bigger than any other community that takes part in survival games. And the developers were quickly made aware of that. And in the last minute, they decided to add a game mode, which they are calling outpost mode. What is outpost mode? So in outpost mode, it's basically like a semi-creative mode. It is a small one kilometer by one kilometer handcrafted map in which you will not have any enemy AI, nor will the storms damage your structure, and you are free to just build as you want. Your character will gain experience and level over time in this mode, although at a reduced rate, which I honestly think is kind of busted because you could just go down and play out post mode for a long period of time and not have to worry about any enemies. I don't think you should honestly gain any type of experience because it's like a cheap way to level your character. Even if the experience is reduced, it doesn't matter. Just spend more time down there before you take that character onto an actual expedition. The base game will have one outpost. So you will get one forced outpost when you buy the base game. When you buy the deluxe edition, you will get two additional outposts. You will get another forced outpost apparently, and you will get a frozen outpost. Now, there's also a desert outpost as well, but none of the stuff shows where that desert outpost is gonna show up. I'm assuming you may be able to buy it completely separate, or you may be able to get it with the deluxe edition and the, the extra forced. Outpost is a mistype, but as you can see from this post here on their Discord from their community manager, the Desert Outpost is a thing. Can you buy additional outposts? Yes, at some point, those are gonna be DLCs, it looks like. So if you buy the standard edition and eventually you decide you want the Arctic Outpost as well or the Desert one, you should be able to buy that at some point. All of the stuff that comes with the Deluxe Edition is apparently also going to be purchasable at some point as well, separate from the deluxe edition. Now, if you buy the base version and you wanna upgrade to the deluxe edition, currently you can't do that. You need to refund your base version and then upgrade or then repurchase the game as the deluxe edition but they are looking to give the deluxe edition its own page. So in the future, you will be able to just quickly upgrade to the deluxe edition if you want it. At the time of recording this video, everything is 10% off. So the base version will cost you $26.99, normal cost being $29.99, and the deluxe edition will cost you $89.99 with the normal cost being $99.99. At the time of recording this, none of the additional stuff is purchasable separately, so I have no idea how much any of those things are going to cost. Let's talk about game difficulty because this will be a difficult game for some, others not so much. I didn't have too much issue with it the little bit that I've played it so far. Other people who struggle a little bit with survival games may find this one extremely challenging. There's a lot of negative debuffs that can end up on you. They will persist through death if you die and you respawn your character. I did that once. I've died one time and when I respawned, the debuff that I had on me persisted through the respawn. Whether that's going to stay that way, I don't know. The AI just runs directly at you and depending on what AI you run up against, you may be able to block it, you may not be able to block it with certain land masses or builds or what have you. A bear seems to be able to tra tra traverse just about anything. Wolves can get stuck on some random things. Currently during the beta period, the only AI things that I have seen on the map so far is a raccoon, deer, goat, bears, two types of fish, a piranha that can sometimes poison you, and just normal fish that just run away from you, and wolves. 
that's it as far as the life that is on the map. Now, this could change once we get to the Arctic or the desert. There could be more things, but at the time of recording this, that's it. Relatively limited AI on the map. You have to eat, you have to drink, and you also have to manage oxygen. So there are three separate survival aspects there that you have to manage. On top of that, you also have to manage shelter. So when a storm happens, you do take storm exposure over time. I let this max out during a windstorm and I was fine. Uh, I had some negative status effects, but it didn't kill me. Now that could change depending on the type of storm and it could get difficult as we continue on through the betas. They're slowly easing everybody into this stuff. And I think over time, slowly making the game more difficult to get people used to the difficulty of this game. So it looks like what exposure could do to you could vary depending on the type of storm. So if you don't want to buy the game just to mess around with building in the outpost mode, keep in mind that this game is a challenging survival game and it's meant to be a challenging survival game. Let's talk about some quality of life stuff. So there is a ton of quality of life stuff in this game and it, you can see the inspiration they took from a lot of other games like Valheim. There's some other things in the game that I've noticed that they've took inspiration from that I've seen similar things before, but I can't really place the game at this given point of time. But I do see a ton of similarities to quality of life stuff that Valheim has. Uh, that's because the dude who's in responsible or in charge of making the game absolutely loves Valheim and you can tell if you watch any of the videos on the official Icarus YouTube channel he talks about it a lot so building a lot of similarities there food system a lot of similarities there repair system a lot of similarities there so like repairing in this game doesn't cost you anything but stamina when you repair something it drops your stamina down to zero and then you have to rebuild it that's all it costs you building system it takes uh, from Valheim the beams and structure support support a lot of similarities there one thing i noticed on the building system that they took inspiration from atlas is that you can hold down r when you have a specific structure piece and that brings up a, a separate menu that allows you to change how that structure piece looks so for example in order to place a door you can build a door but you won't see the door frame to see the door frame you have to build a wall hold down r select the door frame then you can place the door frame and then place the door inside of the frame there's a whole host of different things that you can see inside this R menu or additional options menu for building, depending on what piece you have selected. This is a really nice feature that I really liked in Atlas and I enjoy in this game as well. I mean, when you're building your house and you want to build your walls, just build a bunch of walls. You want a window, swap to the window piece. You want, you know, a door, swap to the door piece. It just makes everything nice and easy and doesn't clutter your inventory. And I really like the system. Food system, health bonuses and stamina bonuses. Similarities to Valheim there. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there, but a lot of nice quality of life things. This game has a lot of nice quality of life so they really balanced how hard the game is with a lot of quality of life features the downside is is you don't really get to enjoy those too much in these beta experiences or these weekend betas because the full game is not there so you don't really get the full experience there's a 20 day timer so you just go down there and it's basically like playing an outpost mode but with enemies so you can build you can enjoy the storms and have to repair your structure all of that stuff and enjoy the general survival aspect of the game but you don't don't get the ability to return to the space station with exotics and upgrade your stuff and go back down. I have yet to find any exotics on the map. I'm not even sure if they exist on the map yet. So the experience that you're going to have during these beta weekends and the experience that you're going to have during the actual game once it's launched are going to be pretty different. 
I plan on doing more videos on Icarus to try to keep you all up to date with as much info as possible, but we're going to have to start wrapping this one up soon. But before we do, I want to point out something very important here, and that is everything, well, almost everything in this video is subject to change. I want to read something to you from their chief executive, Dean Hall. This comes at the top of their patch notes. He says, to keep the success of the beta weekends rolling, and give you the best experience. There are a few issues and changes we wanted to make. This helps maximize the value of the beta weekend. Now here's the part that I wanna highlight. It is also a good chance for us to show you through actions that this project is about quick and fast iteration. We listen to the community and implement feedback and ideas that we feel fit the game. This couldn't be more true and I've seen it. When I started to make this video, I had a ton of complaints about this game, a lot of frustrations with it, a lot of things that I seen them do that I'm not really gonna get into detail about that were kinda scummy. They quickly wrapped that stuff up and nipped it right in the bud and I guess that's due to quick community feedback. The game is constantly in a state of change and I feel like it's gonna be like that right up until launch. I've seen a lot of different info, even things stating that they didn't really like that they called the deluxe package or the deluxe game the deluxe game and they wanted to change it more to something like supporters or something like that like it just a lot of things that we can probably expect to see changes and constant changes in the game due to community feedback so the more people that are playing the more people that are on their discord and giving them feedback the more chance there is to change and I don't think that that's going to go in the opposite direction. It seems like more and more people are gaining interest in this game. And if that's the case, that means more people are going to be giving them feedback, which means more changes. So this game is actually set to release, not go into early access in November. That is a lot of time for a lot of change if this game is going to change that quickly. So if you do to decide to pre-purchase the game to get into the beta weekends, please be informed that what you are purchasing now is going to change a lot between now and the time that it releases. So treat this as you're buying an into an early access game for the next couple of months. And a perfect example of this is up until just recently, the standard version of the game, the $30 version, did not come with an outpost, and now it does. I can only assume that's because it's kind of scummy to charge people for a free build mode in a game that has building because it's a survival game and people love to build. That's just one example of how this game is changing. So what you purchase when you buy the deluxe edition is probably going to change and have more stuff. What you purchase or what you get when you purchase the base game is probably going to change and have more stuff or it could have less stuff. Who knows? But I just wanted to point that out that they are definitely listening to the community. And if you've been following the game, paying attention to what's happening, you can pretty much see it real time. All right, I think that covers all of the, the main things that I wanted to cover in this video. Let me know down in the comments section if you have any other questions, and I'll try to do some follow-up videos based on what I see the most asked. So if I, you know, what I see a lot of duplicate questions of. I just wanted to try to talk about some of the things that I don't see people talking about because I see a lot of things like, oh, it's got this, it's got this, I got, it's got this, but people aren't covering some stuff that's important other than the hype. Hype is great, but there's a lot of things you need to be made aware of when it comes to this game because it's not like a lot of other survival games out there. All right, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload more content like this or and I just cover all kinds of different games. So you never know when I'm going to be covering a game that you may be playing. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to my supporters on Patreon for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my Leecro Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.